All right. Maybe you can introduce the topic, Eunice. Okay. This is more like an open discussion than a topic. So the topic that a lot of people in the group choose to talk about this Sunday, and they surprised us by not joining for what they voted for. So we are here to talk about 2020, how it was for 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 us, how it was for you, your experiences. Did you notice a change in yourself this year? We will talk. We will ask questions like that to help us reflect on the year and learn from each other experiences. So this is an open discussion. We will start with the basic question. How 2020 was for you? For me, 2020, it was a quiet year, of course, with the pandemic and stuff like that. But it was a year full of struggles in the sense I had a breakup, I, I experienced being broke, I was looking for a job. Then I also experienced the ups. I made money from working online, I started my own business, I started my own YouTube channel. It was a, a year with, with its downs and ups. And it was a year of change because I have just graduated from college and I'm figuring out what I want to do with my life in the future. So this was a, a big starting point for me to go further in life. What about you guys? Um, well, you said something before that you, you every year you review the, the previous year, right? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, for me, I don't do that. I just, um, I just wing it off. I just, maybe, maybe it's beneficial for me to do that. Perhaps I should start doing it. But if I'm going to reflect on my year, um, yeah, hello, Lita. I don't think you can hear us though. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's always ups and downs, but especially the downs. <laughs> it was a pretty challenging year for me as well with the coronavirus, obviously. And um, I had to deal with university with my master's. It was my last year and we had to do lots of research work all while dealing with the pandemic. And it was very stressful. Um, yeah, it, it was also an emotionally difficult time for me as well. Not just because of the quarantine and all that. But because, um, you know, just emotional turmoil, basically. <laughs> but it also had its ups, you know. I started doing new things. I founded the group. I, we, Me and Fatima actually started the group, uh, Self-Development Spirituality in Morocco. And it's a lot of awesome people. And, you know, um, hopefully we'll see, I will see more opportunities opening up to me in the future. But enough about me. You guys... Say what about you, Fatima? Um, this year, I think I have experienced uh, a lot of growth compared to the past years. Usually, uh, usually I compare like school years, not the actual year 2020, 2015, 19, etc. But this year, it has a lot of downs, but I, I, I think I have learned to be a little bit more confident and uh, to get a lot of stuff done. I think that's the, the biggest highlight of 2020, besides the pandemic, of course. So it was a good year, I'd say. Hmm. Right. Audrey, well, do you have something to share? Um, for me, I because I have a physical disability, I spend a lot of time at home anyway. So the pandemic didn't have, you know, the lockdown and everything didn't really have that much of an impact on my life. Most of my work is online anyway. And uh, yeah, for, for me, it was kind of nice to have the world slow down and go at my pace for a while. 
So the the pandemic had no no negative effects for you. Not so far. I've been very lucky. Nobody I know has uh, has been seriously ill from it. So touch wood. It's uh, it's all okay so far in in my circles anyway. Hmm. They say that uh, people in England they experience the most uh, uh, how to say it, the most threat to this virus than any other people in the world. I think um, some of it seems a lot worse than it is. The only difference between the new strain and the original strain of uh, COVID, what we're told is that it can be transmitted easier so people get sick a lot easier from it but the actual effects of it are not the, are are still the same so it's no more dangerous than the original covid mm. oh that's what we're told anyway i don't know whether that's true or not i'm not a medical and they're professional they're lying to us <laughs> uh, yeah. uh you know what the media is like the media likes to exaggerate Hi. Yeah, it's only about that. So, hello, Rachel. Do you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Welcome. I I, I was really struggling to um, you know, to turn on the the microphone. I don't know. This is the first time that I um even like um academic I was in real class because it was real, you know, um the reality of uh, you know officers. I mean. They were never actually, um, you know, exposed to teaching like uh, via like uh, this kind of applic- like application to um, uh, Google Meet. So, so it's like sometimes we had really to show the professor how can they use them. <laughs> so I just got like mad and just up to join that. But yeah, that seems actually good. I like how it looks now. Mm. Do you guys ever do, do you have do you ever try to review your previous year meaning try to see how your year went what did you do in it what did you learn have you ever tried to do this process um whenever i do it it's usually comparing myself when i'm comparing myself to my old self I am just focusing on the negatives, how I used to be bad at things and how I got better at them. And it's supposed to make me feel better, but unironically it makes me feel bad because I know I'm doing something bad right now, which I will be judging myself for in the future. It's an unhealthy thoughts, but it's it it happens. I'm curious if you guys experience something similar. Do you have an example? Um yeah, for example, I am not very good at socializing, but in the past I used to be very awkward and I remember how I would make people uncomfortable with how quiet I would get in conversations as if I am mm. not interested when people are talking to me but in reality I just don't know what to say or I feel anxious so I shut down. So remembering that is cringy, but I'm glad I I'm a little bit more aware of myself and can just avoid mm. social situations so i don't have to make people feel uncomfortable yeah i kind of <laughs> had like the same problem but yeah. i don't know if it's if it's just from the same perspective um how it is for me is that uh every time i was like around the people i mean people that i know or, you know sort of friends i i just didn't really to want to socialize socialize with anything i was just It's, it's some kind of perfectionism like i just mm-hmm. didn't want anything to so that i that i say make something like uh, like make people uncomfortable or just uh, you know i was just really like perfectionist about what I, what i have to say and what i want to say um it has even affected me like in class uh i like that was my problem i think since i was uh, little like i always i always struggled to You know, sometimes I'd know the answer to s- some sort of questions, but I just choose to not really uh, say it because there was like this uh, 
this not this reason in my mind like you might say something wrong you might do it wrong so the result was to not really say anything and just to stay quiet but I'm, I'm 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 overcoming that problem actually it's been like two years i'm feeling really, really good about it mm. audrey i want to ask you you said that uh, this year 2020 it hasn't changed a lot for you so did you notice any changes changes in yourself or do you think you stayed the same during the whole year i think that um because of the way the lockdown works here i've not had people visit me as often so i've become a lot more self-aware um i've become a lot more aware of how much i rely on social interaction and it's uh, interesting fatima was talking about um reflecting on uh, how, how she reflects on the previous year i've actually got a diary that gets me to do that every three months so every three months i look at the last three months i look at what i can improve and uh, i set up a goal for the next three months <clears throat> and it's, it's actually a really cool diary that just just gets me to do that <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool um i have a question like how do you What are the techniques do you use to track your progress when you're using your journal or diary? Do you just write, pour out your whatever you think at that moment so you go back to it three months from now? Or do you specifically record certain things? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a physical diary. Hold on, let me turn my camera on and I'll, I'll actually show okay. you it. It's this. Um, I know this brand. Diary. Yeah, you, you're familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if I move to uh, some that I haven't filled in yet, sorry. You've got like a monthly review that you can do. Mm -hmm. You know how clear mm -hmm. that is. And the monthly review says, "What are your biggest wins? What were your biggest lessons learned and insights gained? Which life areas were lacking and why?" What tasks were not accomplished and why? How do I feel about my progress? I'm looking forward to uh, things I will do to make myself happy next month, how I'll improve next month. And then you've got uh, like a layout of the month so you can plan things in there. And then every three months you've got uh, like a goals list and things like that, my three months goal. So I've, I've got lose a bit of weight as one of my goals at the moment. And it, but it asks you why you want that and what your reward's going to be if you achieve it. So my, my reward is going to be I get new clothes. <laughs> wow, it's like a life coach in the form of a book, basically. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I have another cool. question. Do you mind sharing with us one or two goals you have accomplished in the past three months? My first goal was I, I, I was quite... A lot bigger than I am at the moment so I focused a lot on my physical health as well um, so my biggest goal that I've achieved is losing about five kilos in the last month so that's great it doesn't sound like much but for me because I'm disabled that's that's a yeah. big achievement because I can't do the jogging or anything like that um, other things that I've put in is remembering to meditate remembering to drink enough water things like this Water is quite important to your mental well-being as well, which not a lot of people seem to realize. So putting that in there was a, a reminder for me that I need to do that as well. How important yeah. is uh, reflection for you? Very. Because I have my own company most of the time, um, if, if I don't find ways to calm myself, I will literally drive myself crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, most people are like this. They need some time to reflect on themselves and take a break. Meditations yes. offer that. Offer that, which mm. makes you aware of the moment, away from the stress and from the waves that life throw at you. It's a yeah. good thing to do, especially we we usually do it from time to time. Um, You do it 
uh, you say you do this process every three months. This process like, of reflection on your progress and goals. I do like a mini reflection at the end of each month, but more in-depth ones every three months. And then there is a, there's one that you do at the end of the year in the diary as well. I see. For us in the group, we do a reflection about the goals of the week. Each Sunday mm -hmm. or Monday, we write goals we want to achieve for the week. And at the end of the week, we cross the ones that we achieved. Uh, we've been doing that process and it's been beneficial for me. We, we track also the habits and stuff like that. And this process made me achieve a lot of things in 2020. I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Uh, is it more helpful to have people around you who are doing the same thing or you don't feel like there is a difference whether you do it alone or you share your progress with people? I think doing it with people is so powerful. For example, uh, just a few weeks ago, I, I had sleep problems. I was sleeping late, waking up late. And I typed in the group that I want to start a, a 5 a.m. challenge. I want to wake up at 5 a.m. I will mm -hmm. read a book called The 5 a.m. Club. And I need someone to read the book with me and start with me this challenge. A friend said that he had problem with sleeping too. So we did the challenge together and he was pushing me to read the three, four chapters per day. If I, wa oh, if I was lot. alone, I will only read one chapter 10 pages or something like that. With him, I'm doing things a lot faster. And I'm starting, I am on day three right now of the challenge of waking up at 5 a.m. So yeah, doing it with other people is very powerful. It makes you accountable on, on the things that you want to do. And very motivated to do those things. Uh, I'm sorry, but Zoom is still being a, yeah. a pain in the ass. It's, it's, it says like remaining time is two minutes. So apparently after two minutes, the meeting will end, even though we just started. So Audrey, can you, can you like host the meeting after, after this one ends? I can. Yeah. Bear with me. I will find a link. Hold on. Yeah. Let's, let's create a link and join it right now. Oh yeah. That, that works even better. Why did I even think about that? <laughs> IQ 900. That way you're not going to run anywhere. You're just going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when you do that, like you say, hey, after the meeting ends, let's all rejoin back. Then the meeting ends and people like find a person and just <laughs> slip away and they just go do something. <laughs> <laughs> so if I go host a meeting with video on... I may disappear, but I will put the link in the ah, in the um, yeah. Facebook group. All right. Oh. Um, oh, okay, that's great. Which Facebook group? <laughs> Our Facebook group. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys Rachel? are getting ahead of yourselves with the posts. Yeah. Like, who's making hey. them? Yeah, it, it, are they are they like bugging you? Are they like bothering you? I feel like sometimes we, I feel like I'm spamming people too much in the group. <laughs> no, not really. It's really yeah. useful what, what I read every day, especially those questions that makes you reflect. You might you might be doing I mean something normal like I don't know listening to music or just reading something, and once once you see a question there, it just makes you reflect on many things actually that. That 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 goes on like it's it's yeah. going on, but you're just not really aware of it until you just see someone uh, pointing it. Mm. <laughs> True. Yeah, I sometimes wish people were more engaged with the group. To be honest, but I mean, you know, people have their own lives. <laughs> yeah, I would actually, but um, I, I'm just really busy um these days. That's why. I've been busy like almost two months, um, you know. Years of like, you know, uh, years where you have grown a lot. For me, when I look back and reflect, I kind of feel disappointed because 
I always remember my my heyday, as we may, like um, and I like you said, uh, Fati Fatima, comparing myself to how I used to be, and I kind of get disappointed. I feel like um, I am not progressing, but like kind of regressing when it comes, especially when it comes to my personal growth. And mm -hmm. I think this is partly because the mistake, because because my heyday was was a year that I spent where I had no obligations, nothing that I had to do. I just like went full blown and worked on myself all year long, and then, like you know, going on the journey to find myself, going into self development, into spirituality, into meditation, into into myself, basically. And that has been like, you know, hands down the best year that I've had. But ever since then, I like, you know, took up a master's that I was like reluctant to take. And um, this is the mistake. Like I did something that wasn't aligned with um, with me, with with my with my passions, with my my real genuine self, and that kind of regressed me. So yeah, that also a lesson that I learned this year to mm -hmm. to like just no matter the cost, try to do something that's authentic to you. Yeah. Will I you have... try to uh, find your passion this year, or you have you already done that? I'm trying. I mean, I'm experimenting experimenting with making YouTube videos. I mean, so far I've only made one. Um, experimenting with the group. I made a Facebook group trying to create a community. And I experimenting with other things, you know. I'm, I'm working towards that, I think. Maybe. Yeah, do you feel, do you feel any kind of, uh, you know, uh, satisfaction while you are doing this? Um, it's stressful. <laughs> That's why I know this. <laughs> <laughs> the editing part, though. Yeah. yeah it, it's stressful. But yeah. it's nice. It's something new, even if it's stressful. Yeah, but okay. well, when, when, sorry to interrupt you, you can finish. No, no, you go ahead. It's okay. Yeah, but like when, when you finish editing and, uh, you know, doing all that, you just kind of look at your work and say, well, look what I have done. I feel... I feel I kind of feel, uh, you know, mm. happy to do that, or maybe you feel like you accomplished something. Do you get that feeling? Oh, you're talking about the YouTube video, the yeah. YouTube thing. Yeah, I mean, that that was met by a lot of approval from people and lots of encouragement, and that's one of yes. the things that like really made me happy. Like people from nowhere, like just kept coming in, like, "Hey, that's really good work. Keep keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it." So much so that I feel guilty for not releasing a second video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been really great in that regard. Well, I have a question for you guys. What is the best thing happened to you in twenty twenty? Let's answer. Let's each one of us answer that question. What is the best thing happened to you? Um. <laughs> okay, well, I will me, start. I think the best. I was going <laughs> to say. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, for, for me, it was starting my my own business and. Um, finally being able to do an angle of teaching that I'm interested in as well. Mm. That's great. Can you elaborate on that, please? I, I don't want to advertise or anything. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you, can, you can talk about it. Like we share our experiences. That's what this is about. Um, basically, I teach uh, English as a second language, but uh, the business that I've started is teaching advanced English to professionals. So, for example, if you have a, um, a business degree and you learned that in French, to be able to use it in the UK, you would have to learn all the terminology and everything in English. 
that I have a course that would teach you that target language and all of the regulations and everything in English and in British law. That's Just as amazing. an example. Thank you. So yeah, it's, it's just helping you transfer your skills to a new language so you can keep your your career in place. You don't lose traction when you move to another country. I will ask you about about that more of that later about Dash business model <laughs> if you don't <laughs> mind. Okay, for me the best thing that happened to me in 2020 I believe is besides becoming financially independent I I understand I understood more about spirituality by reading a book called Inner Engineering by Sadhguru and it was an amazing book for me why because because um because I was a person that got angry about almost anything with my family. I was stressed. I had many negative emotions. And when reading this book, it, it uh, eliminated all of that, all of those uh, mm -hmm. unconscious reactions like anger, like stress, everything like that. Uh, I'm not experiencing them anymore. I feel at peace. I feel calm. I feel joyful with myself right now. So that was one of the biggest achievements I had in 2020. That's good. That's really yeah. good. We can call it an, a mental achievement or a psychologi psychological achievement. Yeah. Me, the best thing that happened to me was finally be, uh, finishing my master's and being done with you know, education and like, yeah, give me lots of, uh, lots of space to do, lots of things that I wanted to do, lots of things that I wanted to do. You have hey, a Salah. master's? Yeah. In what? In uh, business management. I just finished it this year. With Bro, that's, and everything. that's graduation. Thank you. And, uh, Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. Yeah, it's Anna. Welcome. I think. Uh, how long have you been talking? Like. Uh, properly talking, I think about twenty minutes ish. Thirty minutes, probably. Yeah. We've been talking about our experiences with twenty twenty. What What's the best thing that happened to us in twenty twenty? What you know? What we achieved? What we learned? Stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Uh, should I talk about my 2020? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. What's What's your biggest achievement in 2020? Oh, almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a tough year, actually, especially in the financial financial situation. Hmm. Uh, yeah. My big achievement, I would say, getting more clients in my Web design business. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how to like talk in details. I feel <laughs> it's stressful. So keep talking and we'll talk later. Okay. Sure. Right. What about you guys? Let's see, young Rita. Um I think I think mainly mainly well what I have really uh something that i've done that happened actually not that i've done but that happened in 2020 and uh i'm so grateful for it it's just um overthinking i used to overthink a lot really i just had this mind always racing about especially about future planning like what i want to do with my life um to, to nine years from now ten years from now that was like my biggest problem problem because like everything was unclear. But I'm not gonna say that like twenty in twenty twenty I've just uh, you know got rid of it. But I've like I can see I can see some light inside that tunnel of future planning. I can see some light. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, that, that's uh, that's that's the main thing that happened. Then I'm for it. I, I just don't overthink anymore. Not anymore, though. I, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, like seventy percent. I I don't overthink stuff. I just uh, you just know it. face it with logic and uh, rationality. Usually. Did you figure out what you wanted to do? Um. Yes. Like I, I, I'm gonna say that I figured fifty percent of what I want to do. So now I just some stuff done, so I can find what the other like fifty percent is. That's great because I struggle with that as well. Yeah, but I have a question. Does your overthinking has something to do with your perfectionist tendency? Tendency? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a huge problem with the, you know, perfectionism. Um, especially yeah. when it comes to you know what I said earlier, like expressing my thoughts. Uh, sometimes it's, it's it's I I what what I have noticed is that that kind of birth that I have usually like emerge from my fear of getting judgment from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, same thing happened with the you know. I, I just noticed that really uh, that I rarely live in a moment. I mean, be present in a moment. It's like my mind is always racing about what's gonna happen after. That's why I that's why I mentioned future planning because um, since I got my uh, you know my baccalaureate degree because that's exactly like the second phase of your life when you when you know that you have to really start thinking by yourself what you want to do with your life. Uh, uh, What's I mean every everything that you can like plan at that moment it's usually what you gonna be going with um, the next ten years so yeah that's it yes. um, by the way welcome welcome Hanan and Smile yeah hi uh, thank you for me I think I have the same problem of Rita because. Um, yeah, I I was like uh, I was like always uh, had the idea that all the people are gonna judge me or but after I was like, hey, what's gonna happen if they did? Everyone can judge, everyone can say whatever they feel, but is that going to like touch me? Is that going to affect me or it's not? So yeah, that's what happened. And when I realized it, that. We can judge. We do the same thing. And some persons, like, they know how they are. You know yourself. So don't don't wait other judgment. You know, I don't know if I, the idea is clear or no. But all what I want to yeah. say is that yes. you know yourself. So whatever person said, it can be false or not true because they don't know you. You know yourself better than them. And the much you see yourself in a good way, the much the other person see you at the same way. So yeah, love yourself and see yourself in a good way. And that's my my advice for you. And I'm sorry if I interrupt anything. No, you didn't. No, it's okay. Thank you so much. Well, from what you guys all said, I have developed a theory, which is this. <laughs> What prevents mm -hmm. us from having our best year is our problems. For some, mm -hmm. it is uh, overthinking. For some, it is fear of judgments. For some, maybe other problems, financial problems and stuff like that. And what makes our year great is solving a problem that we have. Well, some say um, so they started their own business for me, I've uh, got much deeper into spirituality and, in a sense, my inner self, how to manage my inner self. So what do you guys think about this? To have your best year, you need to overcome your issues. If you keep, if you keep being trapped in, your same, in the same issues, you will have the same year you had last year. What do you, what do you guys think about this? Yeah, that's interesting because um, uh, for me, I think you are right. 
much have been well just a reflection about on just just a reflection on our year you will see that the proudest moments you have is when you did something great by yourself not something happened to you from the outside for example you may have graduated from college or from a course or something but it's not that uh that certificate it what made you happy but the effort you put in it true yeah it's like you gain uh, oh. more confidence as you're doing it's also the certificate count <laughs> mm-hmm. what happens if you make your efforts and at the end you are without your certificate how are you going to feel hmm. it's going to suck no. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be, like, disappointed. Yeah, true. All the efforts and... Yeah, so I think the both of them. Well, I, yeah. Like yeah. We want to do the efforts and be rewarded for our efforts, basically. Yeah, I think that can be applied to anything, to also goals that we plan for 2021. We, we When we put the efforts, but we don't get the results. For example, uh, Audrey, you have a goal to lose weight. Imagine working out or doing certain activities fixing your diet but you don't see any results you will start feeling down have self doubt i will but at the same time i think that it depends on how you look at it as well if i have done my best and even if the number on the scales hasn't changed and i know i've done my best then i'm okay with that i know that doesn't sound like the rest of mm. you but uh, I'm I'm okay with knowing that I did I know that I gave it my best shot. Mm. If there's at any point that I started eating cakes or something like that, then it's a completely different story. But uh, no, if, if if it's something that I 100% committed to, and it's something that I put 100% of my effort into, and I still haven't managed to achieve it, then mm. that's for me that's a lesson. Just try again. Keep trying, keep going. Yeah, I, I, for me too, I believe, for example, mm-hmm. if I prepared for an exam well, but I didn't get a good mark, it won't matter much, but I will be proud about preparing for that exam more than getting a bad mark or getting yeah. a good mark. The happiness from preparing a lot is much greater than the happiness from that mark that I will get. But then if you don't get the mark, you're going to try again and feel like shit about trying hard again because you failed the first time. So it's going to be harder mm. the second attempt. The first attempt, you get confident because confidence because you're doing what you're supposed to and you're expecting results. The second time is full of doubts. So mm. how do you deal with that? I think there is a third point for me. Mm-hmm. I think we talk it about effort and results, and after we talk it about about effort and no result, and there is the third one. Your effort, maybe in the second one, you did your effort, but you didn't do it with a smart way. Sometimes the way mm. can really change results. So it's That's also a point. That- Sometimes that, maybe yeah 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 I get you. Mm. Yeah. So sometimes maybe we are like doing a lot of effort, and maybe we can just like do it with less effort, but with intelligence, and it's gonna make some results. Yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> and and about and like, like yeah, you, you take you away the it. self doubt part. Yeah, and when we don't get results, it's not there is a problem in us. Maybe there is a problem in the way how we did it, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think I see what you mean. You're talking more about um, analyzing why you didn't get the results, yeah. Yeah, maybe if, like, you said you can try again, and I said maybe if you try it again with, with better planes, Maybe yeah. it's you. Ha- you will have a good result. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think yeah. I think Salah's trying to say something. 
No, just keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, let me add another point. That's true, but the, I think the boss, the best, the best case scenario is for the effort, the efforts to be the reward. You know, when you do something that you really love, the effort itself will be the reward. Like for example, take someone who's like um, a basketball professional player. You know, he, him playing basketball training is the effort, but. You can have two people. You can have one person, like you know, doing the effort and like, hey, I gotta train, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, blah blah blah. I need to achieve the NBA. I need to get like you know, top place or whatever. And the other person who's just like, he's not thinking about all of that. He's just doing the efforts for the effort's sake because he loves playing basketball. You know? Yeah, maybe yeah. like he finds his pleasure. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, basically, that's the idea of passion. That's what. You know, there is this saying that if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life, which is a very, you know, big ideal and not, it's not, you know, uh, practical for everyone, but it's something that's good to strive towards, I believe. Guys, uh, yeah, I, I, that's actually the same thing I wanted to say before. I said I don't want to say anything. I think I have a different approach for achieving goals. I think enjoying the process, as uh, Seth said, enjoying the efforts you do. That's you know that's uh, that's why I think I think you should be grateful for or like look for. I mean, if if you have a goal, for example, to hit a million dollar at the end of the year, you should. Uh, Consider the process you go through while trying to make that or doing some, whatever the goal is. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the I idea think. is clear. I'm a little bit nervous. So, yeah, that's. I mean, if you, I want to hit a goal. I don't. I, I shouldn't consider it as a, you know, like a going through hard times to hit that goal. I should enjoy the times and the process or the progress I'm making to that goal. Because the end goal, let's say you want to hit a million dollars. You hit a million dollars. Is that what makes you happy? When you hit a million dollars, that you are happy. So what next? Hmm. I, didn't, I don't um, know if I <laughs> you could yeah, yeah. Uh, make the idea clear, but that's what I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just reflection on your, just reflection on your, your year. You will find that anything you are proud of, that you achieved or you are proud of about your year, it was because you put effort in it. It wasn't easy uh, for you. You put effort in it. That's why you feel proud about it. Yeah. So, yeah, I believe this... Should uh, we should be aware about this in 2021 too? If we want to be happy this year, we need to put effort I in think, some things. I think that ties into the topic of meaning because you can do something, you can put effort into something that's not meaningful to you or that's contrary to what's meaningful to you that doesn't align with your values, and you would probably not be proud about, mm. about it or of it, yeah. You know? Yeah, for example, someone studying in, in a school just to please his parents or something like that. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, let's try, let's try to go back to the topic that we were talking about review on our last year. And you made a video about that, Eunice, right? Can yes, you like, I did. Just, just, just give us like a brief, um, you know, the points, the main points that you made in that video because I didn't... I didn't watch it yet, to be honest, and I wanted to watch it. Yeah, I shared some great questions that will help you to reflect on, it, on your year. And the first one is your achievements. And you ask yourself, what did I achieve last year? Not to feel down, but just to feel proud about the things that you did. And it doesn't matter how much you achieved, whether small or lots of things you achieved. What matters is you have made some progress during the year. That's what matters. So we document the progress that we made last year. Then I shared some other questions. For example, 
What are some of the positive changes you saw in yourself in 2020? And some other questions that will help you to reflect. I will share them with you guys. Here. But why? I, why? Why reflect at all? Why to reflect? Well, it, okay, let me think for uh, a good answer to that in a few seconds. Well, if you don't, you will keep repeating the same pattern in the next year if you don't reflect. You won't know where, where you are standing right now. You won't know what stopped you from achieving the goals that you set for yourself in 2020. Probably most of us wanted to do so many things in 2020, but we didn't do them. Why? You need to figure out why. What stopped you from doing them? And you need to tackle this issue this year. Otherwise, you will keep just repeating the same passion. A year feels the same as the next year. We are not growing. We are still struggling with our thoughts, with our overthinking, with our fear of what other people think of us, all of the issues we have. So reflection is a process where we learn about ourselves and we better ourselves. That's what's powerful about it. Yeah, I think it's a good practice to, to do, just to analyze the last year and see what you did wrong and what you did right. Eliminate what's wrong and what made you like happy or successful somehow. And improve the things that, that was good, like in, in work, in, in business, in personal life and anything. I think it's a, it's a good practice to make the next one uh, better than the last. Yeah. Well, let's ask this question. What, what stopped you guys from achieving what you wanted in 2020? What stopped you? What are the issues you are having? For me, uh, can I talk? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think I had a main goal this year is... Actually, in the business side, okay. So uh, I think that's what uh, you know. What's uh, what's needed for me to work on. But what what made me what made me not do the the you know I had a business idea, but mm. I keep or I kept pro procrastinating all the time. I said I need this to to start. No, I need that. I need to work on this first, and you know. Mm. The main project idea was to to make a course about uh, what I do best, which is web design. Mm. And uh, the problem was, you know, when when the pandemic came, um, I started feeling down. I I couldn't do the because it takes a little, little. I mean, um, serious work or hard work. You need to, mm. you know, uh, source and you know. I'm getting lost, so... No, no, you are doing good. So Yeah, I think uh, procrastination, yeah, is the, is the main thing that made me not do my best in 2020. Mm. I'm planning to, to make that in, you know, in 2021, <laughs> but didn't start yeah. yet, though. Besides that goal of creating a course about web design, do you feel that procrastination is affecting you in other areas too. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to go to, to gym for, I keep, I keep, you know, I keep saying uh, the next month, the next week until I do not go to gym. Hmm. And a lot of things, I mean, procrastination is a big issue for me. I tried, you know, I tried, I, I don't plan, actually. I When I plan, I do... You know, I do have a good day in, in terms of uh, productivity. I don't know why I don't keep planning. I keep procrastination. Maybe because ask... it's a, a little bit boring or maybe, you know, stressful because uh, we don't want to make our mind or our body work. We just need, uh, we want entertainment and, you know. Yeah, the easy answer the question. Uh, let me ask you this. What if you find a way to overcome your procrastination issue? Do you think you will do anything you want in 2021? 
Yeah, of course. And I think I'm, you know, I'm I'm trying to to make this 21 the year for me because, mm. no, I, I didn't do what I wanted to do in 2020. Uh, because of uh, the pandemic, it was really bad. I can I couldn't go out, even though I don't go out because uh, I keep uh, I love my by myself and you know I don't go out too much. But the pandemic, you know, I don't go when I didn't go on I, when I used to not go out by myself. I had a choice. Now when the pandemic came and the lockdown, I couldn't go because. Uh, I can't go because I'm forced to not go out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think I think five months. I I didn't I didn't do anything. You know. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff. Not nothing, but no, not uh, uh, not results. Like you know. I understand. I, yes. I learned something. I do work out sometimes, but uh, the over overall, it's not a big thing. What about you guys? What served you? I think for me also procrastination, but for me it's, I look at why was I procrastinating and I come up with the answer, fear of failure. Hmm. Yeah, that's much, much specific. For me, I have fear of success. <laughs> <laughs> I have both. <laughs> Why? <laughs> For me? Uh, hello. Hey. Uh, mm. Who, who's talking? Why are you afraid of success? Oh. I feel... I feel like I can't handle it. For example, I wanted to open a company online years ago, uh, two years ago. But I said I'm too young for it. How can I, how can I invite people to work for me or stuff like that? Thoughts like this. I'm not capable of that. Self doubt, Se uh, fear of not handling success, meaning I will fail when I will succeed. <laughs> For me, ironically enough, it's a fear of commitment. You know, you know, it's it's something like marriage. You know, <laughs> but before you marry someone, you have fear that what if he's not the right person for me? You know, and so it's kind of similar for me with anything that I really, really something really you know very ambition, amb ambitious, ambitious. I don't know, I don't know if that's the word, but <laughs> something that's big that I want to achieve. That takes lots of dedication and commitment. I'm always like, what if this is not what I want to do, you know? And then that brings, like, the fear of success that I talked mm. about. You feel uh, you are afraid to commit to something, and you at the end you find out that that's, that thing is not something you want to do. Exactly. Yeah, and you've invested so much into it, and now you're like, oh, like, mm. that's not what I want to do or something. <laughs> Well, I'm interested to know what everyone else thinks. Mm -hmm. Fatima, what about you? What's the question? I'm sorry. Did you plan to do something in 2020, but you didn't do it? What stopped you from not doing it? Um, I usually don't do uh, New Year resolutions. And uh, 2020 started off with a very depressing uh, tone. So I, that was the least of my concerns. But good, it's a good thing that it didn't last for a very long time. What about you? Well, uh, I planned 2020 before it started. I planned to achieve a lot of things. I didn't achieve all of them. But I noticed that the problem that I keep facing in 2021 was sleep. Right now, I'm, I f uh, that's the first thing I'm fixing in 2021. I'm starting this challenge, the 5 a.m. challenge. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I figured out that sleep is uh, influencing me in a bad way. It prevents me from 
doing a lot of things in the day and that leads to not achieving the goals. How though, like, do you not sleep enough and therefore your productivity is limited? Yes. Okay. Yes. I used to sleep <laughs> until 6 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning and I slept for 12 hours, 10 hours every day. So when I wake up, I only have 12 hours to to do something and I spend most of it in doing entertaining stuff, not productive stuff. Right now, I, I've been waking up at 5 a.m. only three days and from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., it feels like I have lived the, the whole day. The time is so silent and so long. I, I do so many things in it and it's when I look at the clock, I still see it's only 10 a.m. I still have the whole day. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice feeling. I've never felt it. Never Same. <laughs> I, I never imagined it until I tried this. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I, I've been, you know, I've tried waking up at 5 a.m. I did it for 15 days straight, and it's an amazing feeling. You feel like the day is too long, you know. As uh, Yuna said, 10 a.m. You, you think it's uh, it's 4 p.m. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good it's a good. But you think I mean I think you should be consistent on that. Yeah. If you wanna you know feel it that good. But over I think over time when you, when you're used to it, it will be like a simple thing. Especially that if you sleep early. I mean 10 11 p.m. That's the yeah. right time to sleep if you want to wake up at 7 a.m. consistently. So you are saying I should go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe no, there are some exceptions though. Exceptions. So, uh, it's totally normal. <laughs> that book, The 5 a.m. Club, it shares with you a good plan on how to succeed on this challenge. But it shares this secret. Secret it doesn't only apply on sleep, but on any habits you want to acquire. For example, a habit of meditation or working out or reading books. It says that to install a habit, you need 66 days to install a habit. The first 22 days, it's called distraction, and your body is resisting the habit, meaning those first 22 days are really hard. You are uh, creating a new pattern, a new lifestyle. And when you pass the first 22 days, you you move to the next stage, the second stage, with cheese installation. Your body starts doubting. You, your mind will start telling you, this is a, this habit is not for me. I'm not a morning, morning person. I don't like reading books. Your mind will start moving away from doing that habit. And it, the book continues on what to do on each stage. It's very helpful. But... It shares also this important point, which is to succeed at doing any habit, you need to have a reward. For example, for me tomorrow, I will. I need to set a reward for myself tomorrow. For example, tomorrow when I will wake up at 5 a.m., at 10 a.m., I will have a chocolate as a reward for the thing that I did. So if you don't have rewards, your mind will resist the habit or the action that you will take. So when you will have the reward, your mind will crave to do that habit. This is a really important point I learned from the book. Yes, yes, it's uh, so interesting. Don't. Sorry, guys. <laughs> although it is far a little bit from the topic, but. I just felt it will be so useful for you guys in for this year. Yeah, thank you. So, does anyone it's, have uh, New Year's resolution? A New Year's resolution is to not die. <laughs> what? That was my twenty, my two thousand twenties resolution, not to die. <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Tough. Yeah, yeah, with the coronavirus. The, are, are you guys feeling optimistic about the new year or what? Very, yes, very optimistic. Right. A lot of people say that it's going to be a good year. I don't know why. Maybe because after a downtime, 
uh, yeah, it there's will be no an way it's going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not. Let's hope, hope it doesn't. Yeah. Don't but I think it, 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 I think it's not a bad year. I mean, for some people, it's not a bad year at all. Maybe with the coronavirus and the fear and all of that stuff. But, you know, when you look at deeply, it, it's not really a bad year or a good year. It could be a bad, bad year for you. It could be better for the other one. Yeah, well... For me, it was normal, actually, just like 2019. And for the people who say 2021 is going to be good, I think all the years could be good and could be bad. Yeah, it's up to uh, the individual. Maybe. Yeah, in the in the, the in 2019, I mean in December 2019, everybody started to say that 2020 is going to be a good year. <laughs> so that's what they always say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, for me, I think uh, I said that 2020 would be a good year. Well, I, I, ha I have a lot of goals to achieve, but now I think 2021 would be a good year. <laughs> well, lots of stuff happened in 2020, and. People in Morocco definitely didn't like feel the entire impact of everything that came with the year. Like there was, I mean, America especially like experienced a lot of social upheaval and like lots of um, crises, they say. And yeah, maybe we just didn't feel uh, the impact that much from the year. That's why I believe. Everyone, I believe yeah. a lot of people felt. Uh, mental impact for example depression yeah, or I mental agree. issues even us uh, i'm sure a lot of you felt bored uh, you don't have anyone to talk to maybe or you felt lonely or it felt lonely yeah yeah it was it was a lonely year especially at first <laughs> So, that's that's something that I had to fight. That's like one of the things that the things that I really struggled with is the loneliness that came with it. And mm -hmm. yeah, there was there was lots of issues happening in my intimate relationships as well, and like it all came down pouring, you know, all at once. Mm -hmm. So it was it was um, challenging, but you know. Challenging isn't always bad, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually hard, especially for those who are, I mean, uh, called social people or something. <laughs> for me, it was it was bad at first because I I didn't have a choice to go out when I want to do so. But the, in the last twenty years, I I live all the time by myself, so it wasn't really that hard for me. At first, it was, but I got used to it because I don't go out that much. But I know how hard it is for people who, who, I mean, who don't like being alone for a while. Or, you know, it's kind of hard. Because yes. it's a totally different experience. Mm. For me, uh, you want to speak instead? No, go ahead. No, no. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, for me, my achievement in uh, 2020 is uh, I lost uh, 15 kilograms and I uh, I learned to speak uh, German and mm -hmm. uh, I learned to drawing some uh, some draw. <laughs> it was uh, a good uh, a good year for me because uh, I. I was uh, uh, I was having uh, depression in uh, in uh, 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 in January in uh, twenty twenty. Uh, I uh, I. Uh, um, um, Sorry. You can say in Arabic. Um, when the first day of January, 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 
في الموطن كنت ساليت ديك الساعة التريتمون ديالي وفي وسط الكونفينمون كنت كنت كنتريني كل نهار هي باش طيح 15 كيلو المهم كنت كنت سارة أحسن من ألفين بالنسبة لي Proud of you, man. Sorry. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw the pictures, the progress you made. You dropped so much weight, you became an, another person. That's we nice. are proud of you, Ismail. We are. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, some people use the pandemic to better themselves, mentally <laughs> and physically. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I thought I think Lisa went, wait, Lisa wanted to say something. Me? Um, no, I just said to him, that's nice. But yeah, um, since you guys mentioned that, I think uh, one of the biggest issues that, uh, that, I, that I had to overcome, you know, uh, since uh, uh, 2000, 2020 started, was like the passivity that I got into um, once the the lockdown the lockdown started. I just noticed that I became really passive and active for a long time. Um, I was really frustrated to do even some, uh, you know, some simple stuff like uh, just going outside to get something. I I I simply I simply just really hated the idea of going outside because I just got really used to, you know, the passivity that I, uh, that I, that I, that I started living in when the lockdown, lockdown started. Um, yeah, one, another issue was not, not really issue, but like an issue that I, uh, that I had was not really f- before the, uh, the, the Corona, And because of the corona, I was able to do that was, uh, you know, finishing some books on uh, history and philosophy. Uh, the lockdown had a really um, big impact like uh, on that because I just uh, found myself to be having like a lot of free time when I can read those books. The thing that I didn't really find on the previous years, like mostly the previous two years because that was the time that I decided to you know start reading about the history of uh, humanity and philosophy so yeah the corona was was had like some positive outcome when it comes to providing some free time so I can read that Amazing. well guys if you don't mind let's finish with this productive question I asked in the video which is What are some of the life lessons you learned from 2020? I will share mine quickly. One of the big lessons I have learned from this year was to not jump into a relationship. <laughs> to not jump into a relationship. I occupied myself during the pandemic with having a relationship with a girl. Oh, no. <laughs> Reflection right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Reflecting on it right now. Yeah. (laughs) Said done. You 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 should feel proud that you spend it with in loneliness. I wish if I did the same. (laughs) No no no! I did the same mistake, and we broke Um, up three times or so. Anyway, it was a mess. Same. (laughs) Well, yeah. Well, I was having the same issue, but. Alhamdulillah, it's a kid. I'm, I'm happy now. Yeah. Wow. Everyone, everyone's happy they got rid of their partner. For me, it was the opposite. Like, why? Oh. Life, why are you so cruel? <laughs> with time, with time, you will be happy. Don't worry. No, but you... That was really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it's, I've been, I've been in really, really good relationship and like it's ending um, with what was going on. And by the way, did you guys know that the lack- lockdown in Morocco started in my birthday? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That was uh, kind of depressing. Um, that's bad. Well, I wish if I was in your place that 
if I wasn't. <laughs> how did you How did you break up with your partner? It was oh. a painful one. I yeah. broke up with her in Ramadan, and I I got back. I said, "What I'm going to do with this free time? I can't go out. I can't do anything." And it was a big mistake. It wasn't wise, but you know that feeling when you break up with someone and you have a day, a 24 hours, you start having self-doubts. Did I do the right decision or not? Maybe I'm going to lose this person. Maybe I overreacted. But you're, because your mind is uh, uh, is craving that dopamine you, you, you were having with that person when talking to that person, your mind is addicted to those feelings to that person. It's hard to to get rid of all of those feelings, you need time to recover, to become normal again. So when you break up with someone, your mind starts having doubts. Did I make the right decision? Maybe I should go back to her, stuff like that. So I did this mistake, we got back and we broke up again after a month. So, so what was the lesson? The lesson is, uh, I spent so much time talking with her, I could have used that time to learn a new skill, <laughs> how to code or something like that, or learn Photoshop. It would have been but more productive than... You could, have, you could have spent that time watching movies or like little... That's little what I do. Anything. That's what I do, to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's and all it's... my time it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not... Uh, I'm not regretting it, but I'm just learning from it to not repeat the same mistake again in the future. So that's one of the lessons I learned. I have learned from 2020. What about you? You know, Younes just said something, and I wanted to say to, to, to like to talk about it or to answer about it. You said I was thinking about like to broken up. Is that a good decision or not? The moment you asked yourself about that you should broke up with that person. Because if he was that person or the right person, you should never ask yourself about that. I mean, you would be happy and not thinking about breaking up or no. The moment you start thinking about that, the person is, I mean, the relationship between you and the other partner is not good. It's not going in a good way. The moment we start thinking like that, the moment... We lose control, and then we know that we are in the the the, the bad way and the horrible road. That that's really what it is. Yeah, but it was a complex situation in the sense I was having doubt uh, is is the problem with me or with her. I wasn't sure mm -hmm. which one is the problem. For example, if I was the problem, I will ask for forgiveness or something like that. But what I discovered in 2020 with this relationship is I have a childhood uh, trauma. I have read a book called uh, Attached, and it tells you about three kinds of attachments. Each one of us has one, one kind of attachments. Either you are secure or anxious or avoidant. And I've learned that I, I am insecure, and it was because of a childhood trauma I have. So, can you keep talking about that? I think it's really yeah. interesting. <laughs> well, well, it's it's out well, of the, this, this topic. We, yeah, we will do yeah. it in another discussion. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, said answer. What are some of the lessons? for me? Go ahead. Go ahead, Smile. Okay. For me, uh, the lesson uh, in twenty twenty, it was that uh, the human don't achieve the perfect evolution <laughs> that one and two it's uh, a good uh, it's a good uh, coronavirus uh, was uh, good for uh, uh, for envir for environment uh, because uh, the pollution uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. My head is, head but, uh, uh, 
but this um, is uh, this is not personal lessons. I've you said that the lessons ah, yes. you have you have learned is uh, human. My, yeah, yes, I come. I'm coming. I'm com- I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming. <laughs> for me, uh, <laughs> for, for me, a personal uh, lesson that uh, me or you, uh, me. Or you make uh, happiness uh, with uh, corona or without uh, coronavirus. Not, uh, not the situation make you happiness. You make you happiness, happy or make the happiness. Yeah. And sorry for my, <laughs> for my. <laughs> Oh, you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> we understand what you said. That's a <laughs> that's a good point that human beings haven't achieved their full evolution. A virus like this can in humanity. So yeah, this is an oh, yeah. outside lesson. That was a friendly oh. virus. <laughs> so, uh, so, Audrey. Hello, Salah. Mm-hmm. So, guys, uh, you were talking about the lessons you learned from 2020. Yes. Yeah, I think for me, the the lesson I learned from 2020 is not to give promises when I'm happy or having a good time. Because <laughs> when when you, when that time passes, you you stuck with that promise. And especially if you're a person who who like to keep his promises. I mean, uh, when you have some good time and talking to someone. I just promised him something and I have to do it for him or her. So that was really a big mistake I've learned not to do again in 2021. Mm. Besides, I've learned in, in, um, in the business side, I've learned that the more time you, you waste or the, most time, the more time you procrastinate about doing something, the more money you lose. If I, if I have to, or if I can give a, you know, uh, how much money I could have made uh, if I did what I have to do or I want to do, that would be really shocking, actually. But I think yes. I can, I would make it in 2021. Yes. Yeah, those are the lessons. In the personal side, I don't think... Uh, those are We personal. were talking about relationships and stuff, and I think the problem sometimes could be in the time uh, maybe that's not the right time to get in- yourself into a relationship you can't handle. No, so, it's, yeah. We are, we have met in in uh, the real world. If that's what you are saying. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about sometimes it's not really the right time to get yourself into a relationship. You're not. Uh, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking generally, Eunice. Yeah. You know, if you're not really financially independent, uh, emotionally well, independent. You, you, do, you, do you control the time? <laughs> no. no, well, Talk he, what he meant is like... I sometime, meant just, yeah, yeah, know, keep, so, sometimes you're not in a position to have like a healthy relationship or like to maintain a relationship because it's like a big investment and you need to invest a lot of time in it. So yeah. if you have other priorities, you just let you just let let it go and like prioritize what you need to prioritize. Yeah. I thought, it, but I thought it would be aligned. It won't affect me in a negative way. It will only be positive. All right. Audrey, do you want to say something? You've been quiet. Um, I I've just been listening. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the same. What did I learn from twenty twenty? <laughs> Uh, on a personal level, I think I learned to be kinder to myself in a way. If I've spent a day feeling... Sorry? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll... Yeah, it's okay. I'll myself. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I was just saying that I think that what I learned was to be kind to myself because if I've spent a day feeling a bit depressed because nobody's able to visit me at the moment or anything like that. And I've just spent the day watching films on Netflix or something like that. 
there is no point in the next day feeling bad about it and punishing myself for it because I just waste more time that way. So if you need to have a, we, we call them mental days, mental duvet day, we call them. If you need to have a day where you just look after yourself, take care of yourself and baby yourself, do it. It's, it's necessary for your mental health as well. And the next day, don't feel bad about it. It was necessary. You needed that that day. Yeah, that's really profound. Yeah, we 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 often keep uh, feeling bad about those days that we have spent the whole day watching a TV show. But sometimes you may need that day. Yeah, exactly. And if you punish yourself for it, you're just wasting more time and energy. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to add something about my own lesson from 2020. So, um, ever since forever, I've been struggling with, like, having so many um, ideas and ambitions. And, like, I feel like I have lots of creativity in me and, like, things that I can do. But, you know, there's always confusion about what I want to do, always. And always question and doubting things because that's what I always do. And so what I learned is sometimes you need to take action first and then ask later. Sometimes the questions you ask yourself, you cannot just figure out the answer just like, you know, on your in, at your home, like sitting on a chair and like just wandering by yourself. Some things just need action. And you from that exam? action, from the action comes the answer. Like for example, um, I think this is this is what I was struggling with is like knowing what's authentic for me, what's authentic for me to do in my life, and like I always doubt myself. Like, is this really authentic? Is this like conditioning? Am I doing this because I really want to do it, or am I like fooling myself? I'm always like so careful, careful from myself, from fooling myself. <laughs> so what I decided is to just you know and it's called analysis paralysis you just you just paralyze yourself by analyze, analyzing things over and over to death so it's it doesn't work and I, I, I learned that it doesn't work and what works for example in that example if we talk about that example, what's authentic for you to do in your life? You just go and do what the thing that pops up, the first thing that pops up into your mind. And then by doing that thing or by doing things, you learn what doesn't work and what works. And so when you learn what works from that experience, you go and do it. And then from that experience, you also learn what works and what doesn't work. So it's like a refinement process that you wouldn't like you know it's something that would be impossible to achieve by just sitting and not doing anything if you want to like reach the the end answer you know um i don't know if i made it clear yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. kind of what i learned in this year and i'm still learning in a sense yeah. did you guys talk about the the best things happened to you in 2020 that's the first thing we talked about oh no Good. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I thought that it's the last thing because, yeah, we really have a lot, a lot of bad things happened to me in 2020. Yeah, yeah, but never mind. We can we can come back to that, but we'll just like. Well, I want to hear Rita and Fatima talk about their their what they learned from the year. Yeah, I think uh, you somehow mentioned uh, something that I've uh, kind of learned. It's kind of similar to what I learned in 2020, uh, which is uh, that kind of, you know, I just had uh, that type of illusional uh, picture of what 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 I should be and uh, of even like the things that I'm doing. Like sometimes 
them working on any uh, any type of project so be it like uh, professional or academic or even personal i just i just like unconsciously put a, an illusional picture of what the results should be and i keep thinking 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 over and over and i just uh just arrive at the conclusion that i i arrived at the conclusion that it's kind of illusional what i'm trying to reach and uh, and all that and uh, I also like I came across some uh, articles and books that really uh, address this issue and they just, they I'll just make it brief they just say that the, the, the like uh, the difference between someone who is continuous and someone who is like uh, analytical and more like uh, have that kind of like plan or his plan orient oriented is that the spontaneous person usually gets to what what his goal is be it a personal or professional and they just uh, you know they do it spontaneously without really thinking about it that much and uh, the results are usually uh, they are usually like satisfied with the results when you kind of think about whatever that you are doing and you put some kind of an illusion on um, the, uh, you know, picture of what you should be at the end. You're just, uh, you're not, you're not going to be like, you're never going to be really satisfied with whatever that you are doing, even though you might be actually reaching some, you know, some good results. You're just not, you, it's, this is going to always seem to you that you are still at like the, you know, the start of the uh, track. Awesome. Yeah. You're just gonna feel always like you are still back. Got so yeah, that was uh, that was kind of the thing that I <laughs> I never really re realized it. I just thought it was normal. It was part of the. That's how everyone thinks. But <laughs> I just uh, realized that it, it's not actually it's just an issue with me. You know. Yeah, overthinking stuff before doing them is better to do them than. Keep thinking about them. Yeah, it's not really not only overthinking, but you still doubt. I uh, said, mentioned that it's just like you keep doubting. Is it really good? Am I did I do something wrong or something? You know, it's not really yeah. self doubt or something like that. Yes. Learn by doing. We should live by this quote. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, but like it's the fear of it's not something that you do just because you're doing it. It's something you're doing because you're afraid of something else. Yeah, you don't, you, you mainly don't want to fail. You just want to, you know, you just don't want to waste time and then, uh, you know, it's mostly like if you're failing. Yeah, it's like I have this one life and I need to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. And you have like th these countless choices that you can choose from. And you're just overwhelmed and you're anxious and you don't like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, I need to have the perfect uh, path to chart, to find that yeah. perfect path that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just, have, you just have to face like a life with, uh, you know, an adventurous soul and uh, learn from, uh, from like whatever that you are doing. Yeah. Even if you don't get like the result that you were actually imagining to be getting but you just have to you know take it more more like an adventure because it's gonna like uh, this is gonna be hell it's more healthy it's more healthy take the journey yeah mm -hmm. what about you Fatih? oh the, the microphone was muted uh, the one lesson I kept on learning over and over again in 2020 was that as long as I don't do anything about my depression, there's nothing going to change. So there were like so many uh, episodes of me being depressed and not being able to get out of my bed and doing the stuff that I'm supposed to do. And uh, I would wait for the right moment for things to stop feeling bad. But then I, it never worked. So I just had to, you know, force myself to get out of that mental state and take care of myself in order for me to 
uh, do what I have to do. And that's all. How how did you overcome that? What did you do? Uh, it, you just keep on realizing that nothing is going to change. So even if I feel like shit, I still have to get up and do things, do the things that I feel guilty about not doing them. Because the problem was I would wait for myself to be motivated or feeling good in order for me to do what I have to do, which was mostly studying. And uh, when I don't do it, I feel depressed. And then a week passes by, I don't do anything. Another week passes by, I don't do anything. And then I have to get up and force myself to do it. And sometimes I would cry. Oh, that sounds childish, but I do. And, you know, at time, you, you, Safi, you learn that, okay, I can do this. Like, you don't have to be miserable about it. That's you, really talked about, you talked Sorry. about studying, but do, do you have to do studying? That's the question. Yeah, like I, I need to finish my degree. I mean, I know, I know, I know you have to do, but do you want to do it? Mm, I, don't, I don't think so. But for now, I must. Like, uh, it's my final year at the university. I have to do it. Yeah, you have to do, have to do until you can do what you want. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I need a, a job before I can know what to do. At least that's what I think. Humanity is very complex. <laughs> I think that, you know, humanity, Sadhguru said something for oh, the, yeah. in an engineering. He said that if you have a dog or a cat, just give it, give her food. And when he will eat it, he will be at peace. All of other species, they only look for survival. If they have food, they will be at peace. Humans, when they have food, they start thinking about millions, thousands of other problems. He said that. True. <laughs> I wonder why. Like, did the, our ancestors all think the way we do today, or is it something unique to our generation, maybe our I, I modern think, time? Like what? I think it's I think, linked to like overthinking, for example. I think, uh, yeah. Speak go. Ahead. Um, no, if you can, it's okay. You can speak. You start first. No, I just wanted to say that uh, because we don't have an issue with food. I mean, if you if you find yourself uh, in a situation that you can't, you ha don't have any food. When you have food, you will feel peace. I've been through this. I mean, <laughs> I spent some days with no food, not even a piece of uh, bread. So, uh, having food was really uh, like having a Rolls Royce right now. <laughs> so it's uh, I think it's just the uh, this uh, something we miss. So when you have food, we, we start thinking about something that we don't have. Yeah, that's the yeah. angle. Yeah. There, yeah. there is also like uh, you know, uh, the difference between um us and other animals is that we go, uh, we simply you know, after the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and everything, uh, the society was established. So now you have like an occupation, some kind of social things that you have to do. We are more social. Um, we think, you know, our brain uh, suddenly started growing, so we are still evoluting. And uh, there's simply something that we have with us that we get whether someone like, uh, you know, satisfies with us, you know, in terms of. Uh, socializing and everything when, like when you are socializing with someone your main goal is just to you know maintain a good conversation without making them making them bored this uh, simply emerging from you know uh our like how do you call it yeah on like our nervous system yeah because of how like it was um evoluted then we have also that we have also that society so if you don't really I mean, you mentioned uh, when you asked her, like, uh, do you really want to work? I mean, 
deeply, deeply um, speaking of myself, if, if like we were living maybe, uh, I don't know, <laughs> so that kind of uh, utopian life where actually you're going to be able to find food to, uh, you know, own a land, um, build your know, own house without having actually to, you know, to study, or to get a work. I mean, to, technically to study so you can get a work. I would have done it instead of really like, uh, you know, doing going to school and uh, attending like a university because I believe that half of the things that I learned weren't actually on school, but I just learned, it was just so self-learning. I mean, things that I should actually be learning. Uh, I don't think, I'm speaking of like the, the Moroccan schools and stuff. I don't think uh, we were able to get that from, uh, you know, our schools. So it was just some uh, kind of self-research so yeah, if uh, if it wasn't for work, really, if it wasn't for sur- surviving um, in this society, I wouldn't have like gone to university or even worried about getting a degree and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think. I you think not, uh, yeah, you can speak. No, 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 no. For the point we just talked about, uh, I don't think only in Morocco it, it, the problem is with the the education systems all over the world. I mean, a lot of people are dropping out of college or even yeah, in the U.S. or the most, uh, you know. Yeah, I said Morocco because that's where I live. So I just uh, didn't feel really the need to talk about, you know, other educational system because I, I I don't know. I don't have an idea about, like, the program that they teach and stuff. That's what. Yeah, th- what I said is that even the, the programs in the U- U.S. or wh- wherever, I mean, some people prefer self-education or self-learning because it, pay, it pays off much better than, you know, getting a degree and spending money on it and spending time. Uh, for me, I, I have a, I had an experience with, I mean, with college. Uh, like Fatima, I wasn't really happy with the, with the education or the, the materials I got from the university. I was studying psychology, I studied it for one year and a half and eventually dropped out and started learning my, by myself. I learned graphic design, web design, digital marketing, and I think that's the best choice I've ever made in my you know, professional life. I mean, they don't have to, some people limit themselves with the, the degree because maybe because they don't know anything about the other world. Because I think I know that there are a lot of opportunities better than uh, studying uh, all those years, spending all that money and time on a degree. And at the end, you get a job in Morocco with the salaries in Morocco, you get a job minimum wage, working nine to five, you know, you don't do what you want to do in life. You don't go with, you know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have freedom to do what you want. I, I yeah. actually wanted to ask you this. Um, didn't you, like, like you, you dropped out of college, so you weren't afraid, like you didn't have the fear of, from the lack of that, like, guarantee, like, because once you have a college degree, like, you get a sense of security, like, I might eventually find a job. But, like, when you don't you don't have that, like, you need to 100% rely on yourself. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, uh, uh, before I, I decided to go drop out, I, I spent three months thinking and planning on the, the bad and the good things that could happen. And I decided to drop out because I, I knew that there was a better chance, a better opportunity that fits my, my lifestyle, the life I want to live. Because I don't want to, from from my childhood, I, I've never imagined myself working uh, for someone, spending all the day at the office or wherever. So when I, when I knew that there's something called freelancing or online businesses that you can learn just by yourself and uh, start working without uh, relying on some, some 
you know, some bosses to wait for the paycheck at the end of the month. Uh, besides, I love traveling. I love discovering new places and meeting new people. So when I learned that, I was really grateful. I was like, wow, is there anything like this? And I'm, you know, uh, limiting myself with the college and the, the, you know, the useless things to teach there, especially in psychology in Morocco, you know, it was really bad. It wasn't a good experience, though, so I decided to go. It was really hard, especially at the beginning. I was, you know, I have just knew that or decided to learn something and use it to make money. But it took some time. It took almost like three months to get the first dollars in from this kind of job. So it was really a, you know... It was a, a good, good decision, but it took me courage and uh, a lot of things to sacrifice. Well, you know? a very important lesson said Guru Garfield book in engineering, engineering is that any, anything we do in life is because of one reason. We expect to be joyful from that thing. And he said that we are the way we are right now because humanity since the beginning uh, reaches said the stone age etc and the starting of civilization why, why, why all of that happened because humanity thought, thought that by creating that by creating civilization houses, technologies developing technology and stuff like that they will become happy they will be in a peace of mind in a joyful peace of mind but it was the opposite the more things we have created, the, the far away we feel we are from ourselves. And he said that we need right now to, to look at what matters, which is us inside, our mentality. We don't need to build on anything which is outside because we are no better than our ancestors. We, we are comfortable than our ancestors, but... Mentally, we are not happier than our ancestors. Maybe our ancestors were much happier than us, living a simple life. We have a comfortable life, but mentally, most of us are struggling. Yeah, guys, uh, a minute. Uh, go ahead, uh, Smaïl. Mm-hmm. اه قلت لك انا بالنسبه لي خي يونس في المغرب كنت كيتبدلوا الامور فهمتي شويه ماشي بحال برا هكا كاع كاع عندك عندك واحد لو سالير ديال ان شوماج فهمتي وقعت لك اي حاجه راه عندك واحد التطوير اي دونت ثينك ذا كونتري وي ار ليفين ان ماترز ان ذيس داي ان ايج بيكوز وي هاف انترنت اند اني بادي كان ورك اونلاين عرفت yeah. انا عرفت uh, anybody uh, can anybody can learn a skill online it doesn't the the place doesn't play much role unless you are in educated اه الصراحه لما دابا هاد الوقيته هذه يمكن لك تعلم اي حاجه غير بالانترنت كما قلتي يعني ما كاينش هذا المشكل ديال الخدمه واش تخدم ولا ما تخدمش كي خصك دير الدومين اللي كتبغي حيت اصلا في المغرب كاع لي دومين يمكن لك تشومي بهم ما كاينش زعما شي دومين غاتخرج وتخدم كاع لي دومين تقدر تشومي بهم يعني تتحاول دير الدومين اللي كيعجبك وتكمل فيه بصح هادشي كيبان يا اتس اكشلي ا بروبليم وذ ذا مايند سيت اي مين اي هير ا لوت اوف بيبل ساين ذا وي ار ان موراكو وي كان دو اني ثينغ وي كان هاف ا لايف ا بيتر لايف انا خي صراحة كيبان ليا هو دابا الناس في المغرب داك المايند سيت ديالهم ديما كيبقى يشوف تيقول زعما راه راه الناس حاضين وراه راه إلا ما خدمش وراه إلا ما شدش الدبلوم هاد العام ولا عاود هاد العام ولا بدل هاد الشعبة راه الناس فهمتي لور كا تا شي واحد ما ديها فيه فهمتي تا واحد ما ديها في الآخر غير كيبان لينا وصافي فهمتي تا واحد ما ديها في الآخر الله يجعلك تبقى تقرا تا عشرين عام ما Pumji. Yeah, guys, sorry to interrupt. Let's set a time to end this. 
مثلا for for example 10 or 15 minutes from now we should end this and let's organize the time to talk yeah how long you you want to keep going I have no problem for my side because I've just joined <laughs> yeah is 10 minutes good for everyone I think you want to yeah. sleep so you can uh, keep that yeah yeah, oh, yeah. let's make it, it 20 was... so it's uh, 11 p.m that's good I guess Okay. Yeah, it's good for me. Because uh, I think uh, did did we talk? About, did you talk about the 2021? What are the goals and how do you plan to make to make them happen? I've I've learned a useful thing from Instagram from a guy. He said that I will say it quickly. You only need to have three big goals, two or three big goals for this year, and have from three to four habits for each goal to achieve. For example, let's say I want to achieve 1,000 followers in my YouTube channel. I have zero. I want to achieve 1,000 by the end of the year. That's one big goal for me, for example. And to achieve that goal, I need to create two to three habits to achieve that goal that I need to do daily. To, make, to have 1,000 followers, I need to make good content, good videos, That's another goal. And to make that goal happen, I need to do my research. That's one habit to do daily. Every day I will need to do a research about the topic. I need to write a script. You create habits to achieve that goal. And for each goal, you have two to three habits. That's a good plan. I think I'm going to do it for this year. Yeah. What about the rest? What are your goals? How do you plan to make, I mean, to achieve them? Would love to know so we can know. My goal for this year is to basically properly launch my business. I've spent the last, well, since last April, really, uh, preparing it. And uh, this year, April, May time, I want to launch it properly. Is it a platform or a service? It's um, it's teaching advanced English to professionals. Uh, in a platform or in YouTube or in uh, calls like this, private it's, calls. It's in a it's, it's a combination. Basically, um, I've got online content, and then there will be mm. a physical box that I send out to students with like a, a relevant dictionary a workbook that they can use alongside the um, the online content, uh, a study planner, all sorts of little bits and pieces like that for them, pens, this sort of thing. Uh, the online content will be uh, mostly videos, presentations, that sort of thing. And then I want to support that with weekly or monthly one-to-ones with students as well via Zoom or Facebook or whatever they need. I prefer Zoom, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I think having a website about this service that you are offering will be so helpful for you for getting clients and attraction to your business. Thank you, yes. Yeah, of course, websites play a big role in, in marketing. Mm -hmm. For me, okay, let's make my goals, the last one. Sad, tell us about your goals. Well, my goal, um, basically to become financially independent. Like, that's my main goal. And finding a way to be able to continue my life abroad, you know, in a different country, uh, in an English-speaking country, very preferably. Because, um, yeah, location um, matters a lot to me. And I would rather be in a location that I find more suitable to me. And my current location isn't that in my opinion. And so yeah, it's it's my it's mainly two goals, like you know, one feeds into the to into the other, and yeah. 
respectful goals. How, how do you plan to make them or to achieve them? Well, um, I'm I'm trying different things. Right now, I'm trying to get into English te teaching, and at the same time, I'm also going to try to use my master's to get a regular job, and that would make it for my financial security. And through that financial security, I can start planning, and maybe um, you know, using the skills that I got from my job experiences in Morocco, you know, elsewhere. And you know, winging off from there. And well, it's complicated with me because I, <laughs> that's one thing. And another thing, I also like want to get more into my passions and also think about that. And I don't know for some reason, like those are like uh, distinct from each other: financial independence and and passion, because. Yeah, I think it's more easier for me at this moment to. Um, I think you can do that. You can combine them for sure. Maybe in the future, I'm open there. Audrey, is that your passion, teaching English? Yes, and it took me a long time to find it. <laughs> you see, you see, said <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. How how long did yeah. it take you? <laughs> um, I don't want to depress you, but it took me about 25 years. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I hope it doesn't take me that long. <laughs> but I'm already like, I have clues. My clues are I have English language because I love speaking English and public speaking and personal development slash spirituality slash everything that has to do with life. Those are my main clues and that that's my biggest indication of my, my, my passion with me would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since, since it's English is there and Morocco is not an English speaking country, it would be probably hard to make that like really happen in here. So I'm, and it's also more suitable for me to, to move elsewhere. So yeah, enough about me. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the business of helping people really, you know, pays off and make an impact. Is that what you go for in your business or, you know, just... Uh... Exactly, yeah. I mean, contribution, basically. Any contribution feels good. Yeah, so, yeah. Brings that makes money at the same time. And it's meaningful to you, yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, my goals in 2021, just like, you know, achieve the goal, the, the main big goal in 2020, which is making courses, teaching web design, because I love, you know, helping people learn new things and, you know, make money out of yes. it. Besides, uh, I have a financial goal. I don't know if I can hit it or not. Because the the reward is actually big, um, you know. I'm you know I'm assuming that the the courses I'm gonna make with marketing, with the right marketing and stuff, would would you know help me hit the the first goal, which is two k per month. Yeah. I have a brother in in Boston that told me they'll never make it. <laughs> you know, we were talking about the. The, the business uh, industry I'm working on and developing. And he was telling me that he always tell me that uh, you'll never make it. And it's hard. And say, I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe you can make it. I see people like this making. Yeah, such, yeah. And this is how they do it. First of all, they provide value, free value. They make YouTube videos about design, how to learn design. Then when they get attraction, when they get fans, when they get people watching their videos, they like the content that they give, they start selling courses. First of all, they provide a lot of free value. Then they, say, they start selling courses online. Yeah, that's the, the right strategy to do it. For me, my, uh, my brother tells me that if I can hit 2K per month, he will give me an extra 5K. 
which is really, you know, I don't know if it's uh, going to happen or not, but I'm going to do my best on it. And if we, if we kept uh, talking yeah. this this way the next I year, th- maybe. I think I think that's a lot. And uh, for me this year, I'm planning to achieve only one one hundred dollars each month, at least one hundred dollars each month, and growing from that. Or maybe I will start with ten dollars per month and grow. Yeah, of course that. you you can make that big amount in a short time. Um, you know, uh, I would say it would take me six months from creating the material than promoting it. For me, my strategy is not you know uh, provide value at first and then sell a course. Uh, I at the moment and um, I'm convinced that I don't want to sell courses, but I have a a you know a different monetization plan which is gonna make the courses always free but at the same time i get i get money big money mm, if i clients. get you know, yeah no clients you can get, get you know web, des- uh, web uh, design clients to sell them your service as a, a web designer but that's also not the main goal because in 2020 one of the the worst things happened in the professional side which is working or uh, yeah, you know, working with the cheap clients, you know, mm. cheap clients are the worst, you know, they keep telling you to, you know, uh, modify a lot of things and added some extra crazy things for, for mm-hmm. that amount. It's really not worth it. That's one of the bad things happened to me in 2020, which will never, I actually don't like working for people at all. I, I do freelancing just because I, I need some money to support my biggest project plan. On the personal side, I'm, you know, or let's say the, yeah, the personal side, I want to read more books because uh, in 2020, I didn't read. Yeah. Almost, That's... Maybe one book. I yeah, think... and I'm, I'm, I'm starting the challenge with the, the 5 a.m. challenge. Really? I started before uh, a challenge called the uh, 75 hard challenge. I don't know if you are familiar with. No. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know the who created this bit so famous challenge. I couldn't actually I couldn't do it. Uh, the the first 3 days were okay, but the I quit. <laughs> I think reading books is the most important goal anyone can do in 2021. Yeah, it's really well, important. It helps you develop yourself. But the problem for me is not being able to get the books where I want in a, in a hardcover. Uh, or download you know, PDFs, hard. dude. Like yeah, them. PDF. There are a lot of books PDF, but it's it kind of bad because I have some problems in my eyes. So, mm. Well, <laughs> let, let's hear what everyone else has to say. About is uh, Amazon Kindle not an option for you? Mm. Yeah. So you can download the books on uh, on a Kindle yeah, app the, on your phone. No, there's no problem in that. The books actually are free. You know, some sites provide that for free, but uh, I pre- I prefer to re- read them. You know, in a book, a hard cover. Ah, uh, you just PDF. Answer. Yeah, PDF versions uh, really bad for my eyes. I mean, I spend. Uh, a lot of time on computers, so I don't want to add an extra time yeah. reading books. Yeah. So, Rita, Fatsi, and Vidil. Let's see what you think before we wrap, wrap up. Yeah, um, uh, concerning uh, the goals of 2021, my goals of 2021, I uh, mostly want, want to get, like, a uh, I want to be done with my uh, BA, hopefully this uh, June or July. Uh, that's from an academy What are you side. studying? Um, this is my last year, uh, like my my last year on the like uh, linguistics, English linguistics. Mm. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get that done from a side. And uh, yeah, concerning like interests, I I have some kind of uh, like project, self project to finish, <laughs> uh, like reading the word history. I, I've mentioned it before, like from the uh, Stone Age until um, what we are currently uh, 
you know, live in. The, what do you the, like about history? Um, you know, it's the history gives me like good feeling. Like whenever I'm looking at these stuff that happened, I mean, imagine yourself like reading something about, uh, let's say, uh, the Rome, the Roman Empire, like uh, when it became the Roman Empire, like it just makes you like it's like you teleported you did like a travel like travel machine you were you were like put inside a travel machine yeah and uh, then you were put to that time where the the roman empire wars and everything was going on so it, mm. i'm just so so passionate about that because there are things that that you just that i just read and hear about so it's kind of nice to really get deep into that to know you know the te- details and stuff. Mm. Um, I also, uh, you know, recently uh, started philosophy, reading philosophy, like uh, two years. It's a vague um, field, to be honest. It takes a lot, lot of time to really um, get it done. So I'm, uh, I'm making that a project as well. To, to you know. Do you- do you have a good read, everything? Good reads account. Reads account. I usually, I usually use like a, a website to download PDFs and stuff. But yeah, yeah, if you if you are talking about some like philosophers that I would recommend to you, yeah, sure. Just um, you can drop your Facebook or whatever social media that you are using. I can sure. really send it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So these are like mainly my projects for. Uh, to like 2021, 20, I just uh, get in my BA and uh, finish in these two uh, self projects. Fuck, Um, I don't have uh, a new year resolution. So the only two goals I can think of is to get my BA and to find a, a job in my hometown. That's all. So the, the, those are good goals. <laughs> yeah, just like you get in the BA. Everything, everything evolves around that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life starts when you finish university, basically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I've got bad news for you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's where the real work starts. Yeah. <laughs> like finding your passion. <laughs> yeah, like trying to figure out how to live on your own or like navigate life. Yeah, Vidal, that independence. Vidal, do you want to say something? We haven't heard your voice. Oh, no. He ran away. He <laughs> left, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. He or she left. He bailed. Well. Yeah, I think it's uh, time. Two minutes yeah. to, to go. <laughs> uh, let, let the guy go to sleep. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or not sleeping today. <laughs> well, he's, he's part of a 5 a.m. club. Is, I is, am part of, is, I am, yeah, we're part Chad, of the 3 p.m. club. <laughs> I'm part Chad of the is, involuntary 5 a.m. club with the dogs. <laughs> involuntary, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the dogs wake me up. <laughs> oh, they have their own 5 a.m. Yeah, they have, a dog. they have their own internal alarm clock. Well, and they've decided amazing. when it starts getting light. <laughs> they woke up with the sun. Yeah. Like birds. That's yeah. That's amazing. Why are why why humans aren't like that? Because <laughs> humans have Netflix. Oh, it's the <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will wake up with the sun, Yanda guys. It was a pleasure, a really pleasure to listen yeah, to your, to your experiences. Yeah, it Thank was a you very much for inviting us. Thank you for coming. <laughs> And sharing with us everything. Yeah, it was a good talk. Mm. Yeah, it was really interesting. This Maybe is the first time, time that I'm. This is the first time that I'm part of like uh, something that's <laughs> Moroccan and uh, has this kind of vibes. Really, thank you yeah. for providing we that. We do. We do this every Sunday, Sunday. so 
maybe oh, next I was Sunday. really yeah. I was next never aware of it. Really. Next Sunday we may talk about meaning and purpose, how to find your purpose. It would be really interesting. Yeah, this is yes. really nice. Yes. All right. So good night to you all, guys. Good night. Good night. Take care. Good night. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. See you.